there is a reason why that you, myself, and many others on Kick have little to no viewers. Spoiler alert, I'm doing several of them right now. Leave a comment down below if you can guess what that is. So in the beginning of this video, I went ahead and set up a shot to where you guys probably would think that the shot looks okay, that it's fine for live streaming and stuff like that, where it's actually not really only bad for live streaming, but it's bad for making content on other platforms. So in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and try to tell you guys some tips and some things that I've noticed while trying to find new people to watch as a viewer on Kick as well as streaming on kick coming from Twitch and noticing that my numbers are pretty much doing the same and some of these things I'm guilty of and some of these things you're probably guilty of and probably don't even know. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and list these in no in particular order, but let's go ahead and just get right into it. First off, you're not making content in other platforms. I know, don't click off the video yet. A lot of people who try to give tip videos and stuff on YouTube say, you know, make content on other platforms and everything. But what does that essentially mean? That means that you're going to be focusing primarily on another platform or multiple platforms that are, doesn't have anything to do with your live streams, whether it be platforms like YouTube or TikTok, Instagram, maybe, maybe even Facebook. But what you're going to do is make sure that you're not doing the same thing that you're doing on your live streams. And I know that doesn't really make sense, especially if your live streams and most live streams are primarily going to be about some type of game or just gaming in general or something like that. Maybe a little sitting there just chatting with your chat or your community, but most of the part you're going to be sitting there doing video games. And what a lot of people do is take a highlight from a first person shooter or a funny moment from a card game or RTS or something like that. And then they'll take it and maybe put it in vertical form. Some people won't even do that. And then they'll put it on TikTok and YouTube shorts and be like, why is my video not getting a whole bunch of views? A lot of people don't understand that there's a lot more than just taking a highlight or taking a vertical clip or content or wherever and just posting it on another platform and be like, yeah, I'm doing what all those other people told me to do and which is to post on other platforms and I'm still not getting any views on the other platforms or on my live streams. This is something that I'm guilty of. A lot of people would think that you could, like I said, just take a clip and upload it, but that's not the case. You need to actually do research on what makes videos blow up or do good as far as in the algorithms of whatever platform may be, TikTok or YouTube Shorts. There's some times where I've seen YouTube Shorts take off, but not necessarily so much on TikTok and vice versa from other people. And there is people who are doing well on TikTok and YouTube who found the algorithms of both and they know how to manipulate the algorithms to their favor. Now I'll list the person down in the description or whatever to their TikTok, his name is Woe, who puts in a lot of work on their TikTok and YouTube Shorts, but when they do their YouTube Shorts and their longer form YouTube content, and when they do their TikToks, you see that they craft a story. It's engaging and putting that perspective of something that you can easily follow throughout, the, even if it's just a 15 second or 30 second clip from their live streams, they're actually putting it and crafting it and being creative with their posts and not just posting something randomly or whatever. It has a point, it has a story, it's easy to follow, has subtitles, and it keeps you engaged the way it's edited. Be able to retain people's uh, viewership and keep them coming back and following and watching their live streams and stuff. And that person recently moved from Twitch to Kick. So, and they're still pulling in like, I would say 15, 20, maybe sometimes 30 viewers per live stream. And it's just brand new coming over from Twitch where they would pull the same amount of numbers. Now, how does somebody do that? Again, is by making content on the platforms, but again, day and night, nose to the nose to the, to the ground, sitting there doing research, making uh, creative post and making sure that it's going to have the maximum retention rate that it possibly can have. And when people tell you to post on other con uh, content on the platforms, nine times out of 10, they don't even tell you to do that. And that's one of the things that some people don't even realize that when you're not live streaming or wherever, and if you're wasting away just flicking through TikTok or Instagram or whatever it may be, maybe you're staying too much on Twitter or something like that, 
or maybe you live stream and that's it. You just get off or wherever, maybe grab a couple of clips or something, maybe because you had it saved automatically to your computer or you go back through your live stream and grab something or wherever a clip that somebody clipped or wherever for you. And then you just post it and then you're like, oh, that's good. Okay. And then you just go about your day. Like, that's not how it is. Content, you have to continuously make content. You have to continuously be uploading and finding creative ways or wherever to make stuff pop. You're spending hours upon hours on each individual short or video or wherever, maybe sometimes even days or wherever to post that stuff to make sure it's going to get the best bang for your buck. A lot of people won't put in that effort. Some people don't want this to be a job. Some people just want a hobby or whatever and just post things. But if you're watching this video, then obviously you want to know a little bit more about viewership and you want to see how you can grow your brand or wondering why your brand ain't growing. It's not the fact that you're not making content on other platforms. You're just not doing it correctly. And some of us don't have the time to devote to doing that. And that's okay. I have a wife. I have a five month year old son. I moved everything from my living room studio or wherever into here. I had to set everything up. I just switched to kick and stuff like that. I have 100% disability because I have a lot of bad mental issues and on top of that, a lot of sleep issues. Sometimes it's better to hire somebody or wherever to be able to manage your shorts and stuff. And that's kind of what I did to be able to figure this stuff out, but you still have to supply the content. And unfortunately, I'm not always able to supply what the person demands or acts or wherever. And it's not that person's fault. It's just my fault. So again, you have to be aware of why you're not growing and why you're not having numbers. And that's probably one of the reasons why. Number two, the going back to the actual video wherever of the, in the beginning of what was wrong with it, your background doesn't look right. Your lighting is poor on your live streams. And when you do videos, you're probably doing videos like the one in the beginning with the microphone in front of you and it looks super un unprofessional. And I'll ask you, and I'll show examples on screen, what do you think looks the best or most professional, I guess, of the two? Does it look professional from the one in the beginning or does it look in, like professional like one of my previous YouTube videos? If you answered one of my previous YouTube videos, great. If you answered the one in the beginning, there's no hope for you because that's not that's that doesn't look professional a lot of people i see that do a tiktok or wherever that barely have any views if you go to their youtube channel or you go to most people's youtube channel especially a lot of streamers and gamers they will consider that to be a youtube video or that to be professional or that's the way to shoot a youtube video a lot of people won't take time into learning that hey they should get a camera not a c920 or a ring light or elgato key lights or anything like that they hear about what other people use as far as brands go like elgato and they're like i have to get this brand i have to get that brand because this brand is known as premium and this is the only thing for streamers and stuff a lot of people won't take a step back and be like a lot of these photography lights and studio lights and stuff like that you can find a lot cheap uh cheap options and i'll leave some in the description to a videos that i have done covering some cheaper options for lighting and stuff like that that cost the same about about the same of these elgato products or these other streamer targeted products that are going to work better you're not going to have to worry about janky software like you have to do with elgato because Every time Elgato comes out with a product, everybody reviews it and says, yes, this is the best thing for streamers. But a lot of people, for whatever reason, if you go to the forums, if you go anywhere, you will notice that people ain't making videos about how the software is janky or how it blue screens or crashes their computers or anything like that. But when you go to the forums and you go to, to see the negative reviews of, this, of these products, you're starting to see like, hey, they're just taking people's money who wants to be streamers. So you have to be smart and when you invest in stuff. So again, there will be links in the description to better lighting for your live streams um, other than using just the Elgato products or just key lights and stuff like that. Actual lighting is going to make your videos look a thousand times better. Actually getting a actual camera will get your videos to look a thousand times better. Even your live streams a thousand times better. Sony ZV-1 for, for top-down videos, vertical content, unboxing, stuff like that, vlogging and everything. It's around a $600, $700 camera. There's a Sony ZV-1F that's like $500. And then I use the Sony ZV-E10 right now with the kit lens and also with a 16 millimeter lens or wherever, mostly for live streaming. 
and these cameras work wonders. They're my B and A cams, or whatever you want to call it. And then my actual webcam that I keep on my desk is an old um, Alpha 6100 that I got for roughly around $500, $600 on Amazon because it was refurbished, but there was something wrong with it, which is the audio jack. So that's how I, got, I was able to get it so dirt cheap. So I will leave a link to a website down in the description called KEH. They're a used and uh, refurbished camera website that knocks a whole bunch of stuff off the top for uh, cameras, but they do an extremely well done check to see what grade these camera and used gear is. So if you're interested in getting one, then I would suggest take checking that site as well as looking on YouTube to see what is the best content creation camera for your price point. Because a lot of people will just say, go get a C920. It's 2023, 1080p, 30 frames per second isn't gonna do it. That webcam, any iteration of versions of the Logitech webcams, it, it, webcams period, you should completely be avoiding ring lights. You should completely be avoiding anything that's super dated and stuff because you're you're going against to a lot of people who have cameras nowadays who have hd and 4k cameras that are going to look way better than your live streams so again save up for the money because you have to make you have to spend money to make money you have to spend and take time and make it look like you're actually putting forth an effort to stream and to do this type of thing or wherever and at the end of the day, if I can go into a live stream and the quality looks like my quality versus somebody who has a C920 and it looks terrible or wherever, I don't care how good the person's voice is. I don't care about good help. If I can't see the person and understand like what's going on visually and I can't even understand what they're saying and stuff like that because they have a bad mic or maybe they're using a headset mic. It's, it's 2023, there's no excuses. I've done multiple videos on budget items and stuff for live streaming and stuff like that. And the reason why I'm able to know about this stuff is because I actually did research when I had no money. When I first got out of the military, I was 50% disabled. I was making $900 a month. My bills came out to $700, $800 a month. And I was always in the negative or in the red. And again, I was able to build my setup slowly over time, saving up money every month and then buying because I was getting paid once a month, $900 once a month. When I won my 10 year long battle with the VA to get 100% disabled, disabled, yes, I got an influx of money to come in because they owed me money and I was able to buy cameras and stuff like that. But before, when the Elgato face cam came out, I bought that. When the Wave 1 came out, I bought that and I realized that buying these Elgato products, there was problems and issues. Yes, the Elgato face cam, the 1080p 60 frames per second camera is probably the best webcam out there if you have to buy a webcam for whatever reason. But the software is going to be janky. It's gonna constantly crash on you. They say you pl unplug and play and the save settings and stuff like that. It does none of that shit. It's all false advertisement again. But if you're going to spend money or wherever, it's a decent priced webcam for what you get and it will get you by until you're able to buy an actual camera. Avoid C920s, avoid Logitech, uh, webcams and stuff like that avoid razor period for anything streamer related anything like that avoid razor i don't care how much people want to fanboy over it it's overpriced by always overpriced by i would say two to three times what have actually is actually worth and then the software is always terrible when it comes to razor i don't care what product it is it's always terrible do your research find out what works for you don't go to your favorite streamer and see what they use and then try to copy or emulate work what's good for your budget because again i was in that scenario where i had no money but i still wanted to get stuff for my live streams and i was able to do it cut back on eating out cut back on buying really expensive things that are not even necessary like if you want something for your background don't go out and buy these 200 dollars hexagon panels i did it because i had the money go out and get you these 25 dollar three shelf shelves that you could find at walmart or this cubicle thing or wherever that costs like 30 dollars and then put a led strip on the back of it or something like that put it in your room or your space where your camera can see it and stuff like that the, the led strip is going to be like 10 15 bucks or something if that or wherever the actual amazon uh, actual walmart brand excuse me and you'll be good to go and that will look a thousand times better than you just sitting in the dark or you just having a blank wall behind you or maybe a post or wherever and you have these this weird rgb thing like shining on it your setup is what is your battle station pretty much it's going to allow you to not only stream edit make content and stuff like that but you're able gonna sit there and use it as youtube videos like this 
it's a different shot and different angles that I can do in this space because I cared enough to do something for my background or whatever for what you see visually. So it's visually pleasing to the eye. I watched architect videos and, and home guides and stuff. I'll link a channel down in the description that kind of helped me out to set up this space. But after watching videos and having to move stuff in here because my son is kind of like overtaking the house, so I needed a private room to do stuff, I watched a lot of videos, found what worked for this room. It's not the biggest room in the world, but it's a decent sized room. And I figured out the setup that I could do to move tables around and stuff like that, make it easier to do content because that eases the workflow. And that's what you need to do for your, for your content creation. You need to find something that maximizes and optimizes your workflow for making content on other platforms dressing up your background and making sure everything looks nice because again at the end of the day you when you come to a job interview if most people have tried doing a job interview you know you don't show up in your pajamas or sleepwear or something like that with your hair disheveled and unshaven and stuff like that and be like yeah i want this job at this company and uh, please hire me no you're gonna show up in a suit or something that's dressed appropriately for that position or that job you're gonna come with your resume or submit your resume beforehand or something like that you're gonna come with knowledge about the company you're not gonna come into the position where you want to have a job or something like that and not have these things or have done these things. You're gonna make sure that you set yourself up for the best successful position to actually get that job that you're going for. That's the way you should be approaching streaming or content creation. So when you actually are bringing people and viewers in from other platforms, and actually focusing on the aesthetics of your live stream, putting thought and effort into your overlays or wherever, not having these big old massive things all over. And no, it's 2023, simple, clean, minimalistic. I don't care what so-and-so says, if this looks cool, you think it look cool and stuff like that. You have to do what's best for your live streams and what fits best for the scenario that you're finding yourself in, which is this is not the early stages of live stream. This is not the early stages of content creation where you could just record something not overly edited, not learning about thumbnail making and all this stuff wherever. It takes a lot of time and effort that a lot of people won't do. And that's why you don't see as much popular or people blowing up on streams and stuff like that but they, everybody wants to make money off this stuff. Everybody wants to sit down, press go live, and make the hundreds of thousands of dollars, but they don't realize that it's gonna take you years to get to that point. You're not gonna start and within a year time or wherever, be in that position like everybody else. Does it happen for some people? Yes, that's that's like probably like one in one, like one in a million or one in 10 million chances of a person being able to do that within a year. Most of those people, wherever, actually did research and prepped themselves before they even started live streaming. Most of the time, they're not a one man show. And if there are a one man show, either they've been doing it for a while and it finally clicked, or the fact, like I said, they prepared themselves before they even sat down and started live streaming. And that's what more people need to do. Stop listening to YouTube tip videos where people are telling you to just go ahead and start. Just do it now, just go ahead and start. No, don't do that. That's a trap. What they're doing is telling you to go ahead and start so you can watch their tip videos and can keep watching their tip videos and keep coming back to them wherever because you're helping them. You're not helping yourself by doing that. Sit down do your research, set up your, your space wherever you're gonna be streaming and stuff, take time, pride, and effort in making your setup and making your stream and making your YouTube videos, learning uh, Adobe After Effects, whatever editing software you're using, maybe it's uh, DaVinci Resolve or something, Photoshop and everything, simple skills that are going to help you and give you that skill set that you need to again, maximize your performance when it comes to live streaming or just content creation in general. I know it's not necessarily scripted in like a sequence or something like that because it's not like one, do this, two, do this, three, do this, four, do that. That might be good for structural videos, but these are just supposed to be talking head, conversational pieces. So keep the conversation going down in the comments. Let me know if there's anything I forgot or you think that you need a um, more in-depth analysis on or something like that. If you're interested on my thoughts as Kick as a Platform, I recently did a video, you can find that on the YouTube channel down in the description or on, on the screen right now. And on top of that, if you're interested in product reviews, maybe some budget items because you're like, Squid, I don't have the money for any of this stuff. I have a link to a playlist of products that I've already reviewed and stuff for your live streams that are going to be budget friendly and you can actually afford this stuff because <laughs> a lot of people keep telling me that they can't, but they can just 
again, save money, take some budgeting classes or something like that. You can do this as far as live streaming goes. You can make a space that's best for you. And it just might take a while, but that's okay. Because again, this is a, this is a marathon, not a sprint. With that being said, y'all take care. Have a squid day. God bless you and yours. And deuces, everybody. Much love.